Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungso, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, on this Saturday, we commemorate Our Lady, her faithful connection to God, so that we could also, through her intercession, be connected to the grace of her Son, Jesus Christ. And so, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, You are mighty God, and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, may we be set free from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal happiness. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob gave his sons this charge. Since I am about to be taken to my people, bury me with my fathers in the cave that lies in the field of Ephron the Hittite, the cave in the field of Machpelah, facing on Mamre, in the land of Cana, the field that Abraham bought from Ephron the Hittite for a burial ground. There, Abraham and his wife Sarah are buried, and so are Isaac and his wife Rebekah. And there too, I buried Leah, the field and the cave in it that had been purchased from the Hittites. Now that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers became fearful and thought, Suppose Joseph has been nursing a grudge against us and now plans to pay us back in full for all the wrong we did him. So they approached Joseph and said, Before your father died, he gave us these instructions. You shall say to Joseph, Jacob begs you to forgive the criminal wrongdoing of your brothers who treated you so cruelly. Please, therefore, forgive the crime that we, the servants of your father's God, committed. When they spoke these words to him, Joseph broke into tears. Then his brothers proceeded to fling themselves down before him and said, Let us be your slaves. But Joseph replied to them, Have no fear. Can I take the place of God? Even though you meant harm to me, God meant it for good, to achieve his present end, the survival of many people. Therefore, have no fear. I will provide for you and for your children. By thus speaking kindly to them, he assured them, Joseph remained in Egypt together with his father's family. He lived a hundred and ten years. He saw Ephraim's children to the third generation. The children of Manasseh's son, Machir, were also born on Joseph's knees. Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die. God will surely take care of you and lead you out of this land to the land that he promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then, putting the sons of Israel under oath, he continued, When God thus takes care of you, you must bring my bones up with you from this place. Joseph died at the age of 110. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. Give thanks to the Lord. Invoke His name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. 
Seek to serve Him constantly. Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. You descendants of Abraham, His servants, sons of Jacob, His chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, His judgments prevail. Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. Please stand. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, No disciple is above his teacher, no slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher, for the slave that he become like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more those of his household? Therefore, do not be afraid of them. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear, whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, we come to the end of the story of Joseph. For this past week, we have been reading about the story of Joseph. And today, we come to the end of the story of his life in the book of Genesis. And my dear brothers and sisters, if we can see something in the life of Joseph that is, he remained connected to God. His life was forcefully removed from God. His brothers tried to separate him from God. Ibinenta siya ang kanyang mga sariling kapatid ay inilayo siya sa kanilang pamilya, inilayo siya sa kanilang lupain, tinaboy siya 
ibinenta siya bilang alipin sa Ehipto. They tried to separate, to disconnect Joseph from family, from land, and even from God. But if we look closely at the life of Joseph, yes, he was separated from their land. Yes, he was separated from his family. In fact, he was separated from the love of his brothers. But even in Egypt, even when living as a slave, even when at that time perhaps, he was still hurting because he was sold by his own brothers, he remained connected to God. He remained and he stayed with his connection with God. He did not worship the gods of Egypt. He remained faithful to the one God. He did not take revenge to his brothers. He remained faithful in becoming good and charitable to others. He did not disconnect himself with righteousness and with the word of God. Even if he was already governor in Egypt, he remained connected and faithful to our Lord. And at last, towards the end of his life, when he was already buried, his remains returned to the promised land. God fulfilled his promise to him. Even if for the longest time you have been separated from the promised land, you have lived in Egypt, but yet you remained faithful to me in Egypt, now I will return you to the land I promised your fathers. My dear brothers and sisters, this is what we can learn from the life of Joseph. Even if he was forcefully separated from the land, from his family, from his faith, he remained faithful and connected to God. Do we value our connection to God? How do I stay connected to God? In our gospel reading today, Jesus reminds us of this, that through the life of Jesus, through the words of Jesus, we are connected to the Father. And so Jesus teaches his apostles, do not be afraid of the darkness that may try to separate you that may try to disconnect you from the Father because here I am. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. And therefore, everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Heavenly Father. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus now becomes our connection to the Father. Kapag tayo po ay nakaugnay kay Jesus, ibig sabihin tayo rin ay laging nakaugnay sa Ama. Lagi tayong nakaugnay sa Diyos. Today, we are being reminded of this, of the importance of our connection to God. I know, my dear brothers and sisters, that for us, connections are very important. 
ngayon pa lang nakikita na natin ang maraming tao na gumagawa ng mga iba-ibang connection. Nag-uugnayan na, lalo na para sa eleksyon. No? Nagkakaroon na ng mga coalitions, no? mga ugnayan, no? hugpungan, hugpungan, ugnayan. No? Kanino ka ba nakahugpong? Kanino ka nakaugnay? No? Kaya ngayon, kapag sikat ang pangalan mo, ah, I will connect myself to this person. I will connect myself to this person so that I could gain something. We value connections, but are we connected to God? Do we value our connection with God? Today, in this Mass, let us ask Our Lady, the Virgin Mary, to connect us to her Son, Jesus. Through her life, through her prayers, we see her constant connection with God through the Son that she bore in her womb. In this celebration of the Eucharist, as we visit Our Lady in this cathedral, let us ask our Mother to help us remain connected to Jesus. And in this Mass, as we receive the Word of God, as we receive the body and blood of Jesus, we are assured of our connection to the Father. Let us receive Jesus in this sacrament, and by remaining in Jesus, we also remain connected to the Father. Amen. Please all stand. Gathered together as a community to celebrate the mystery of our salvation, we turn now in prayer to God, our Eternal Father, conscious of His love for each one of us. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Father, the bishops, and all who have been called to guide God's people may direct humankind to a knowledge of and belief in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may be given the grace to face difficult situations with courage knowing that the Lord is always at our side to give us strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That young people contemplating the call to be priests or religious may overcome their doubts, fears, and uncertainties. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the sick and the disabled may experience the healing and comfort that only Christ can bring. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may reap the reward of their labors in God's eternal kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we commit our cause to you. Give us the strength to follow you even in our trials and difficulties. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Receive, O Lord, we ask, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things, and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us, through her, the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs, in one chorus of exultant praise, as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please all kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please all kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, 
come at me spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please all stand. Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Ay, dakli 